Hello, everybody. So, Aloof Aspie here. I have been trying to apply to full-time work for many months now, and unsurprisingly, I have had nothing but failure. <coughs> and part of this is obviously due to the current global situation, but I think part of it's due to the fact that the job application process is kind of set up to fail autistic people. And my main frustrations with it come with the in-person interviews that you inevitably will have to go through as part of almost any job application. And while I have a lot of thoughts about that, and actually we'll probably make another video about that sometime, today I wanted to start a new video series that I think anyone can relate to regardless of whether you're autistic or not. And that is about the horrible, horrible recruiters that you always have to deal with. I once thought that if you got hired to do a job, that you were actually somewhat competent at doing that job. But after dealing with all these recruiters over the past few months, they have kind of proven that completely wrong. And apparently really sloppy people can still get a job as a recruiter. And as an autistic person, I think there are probably aspects of this that piss me off a lot more than other people. But basically, I'm just so fed up with this BS that I just wanted to make this video series to vent my frustrations. So without further ado, why don't we take a look at our first recruiter? So today's frustrating recruiter is actually kind of more on the mild side, I think, in terms of I think most people watching this video would probably think it's not too, too big a deal, maybe. But I just kind of wanted to use this first video to kind of set the foundation for why certain things about this process really piss off my autistic mind. So before we get into this, though, just a little bit of background. I'm more or less fluent in Japanese, and I studied a lot of linguistics. So the job opportunities I'm looking for are kind of centered around Japanese linguistics. And this email, if we look at this now, you can see it's related to Japanese, slang, analysis, kind of down my alley, right? Um, this email is very friendly and professional, like it says, oh, hope you're surviving this crazy pandemic. And I know that's what's supposed to make a good recruiter. Personally, I actually don't really care if you're like blunt and straightforward to the point, as long as you get your point across. But it's nice, I guess, that if you can word your emails in a friendly way like this. But the important thing here is, she says, please respond with your resume ASAP if you'd like to be considered. We're setting up interviews Monday and Tuesday of next week. So she sent me this on July 9th, which was a Thursday evening. And she's saying setting up interviews for Monday and Tuesday. So it sounds pretty urgent, right? Like there needs to be quick turnaround. So I go onto LinkedIn and I reply to this message there. And this is what I wrote. I basically said, thanks for sen sending this opportunity. I sent my resume. And then next day. So Friday now, she responds with, I would love to set up a time to chat today. So I respond again within a couple hours. And I write, yes, I'm available today as long as before 6 p.m. Central Time. And then I sent this at 2.29 p.m which seems maybe kind of late, but she's actually, she was actually in Pacific time and I'm in Central time. So it was only like noon time for her. So she still had like half the day to call me. I figured that if this is so urgent to set up interviews for next week, like she's gonna call me this afternoon, right? But I got no response and I was kind of confused. So next day, Saturday, I send this message just saying, hey, I just wanted to follow up about scheduling a time to chat. No response again. And I'm just like, all right, is she like ghosting me now or something and getting kind of frustrated. Sunday comes and she actually does respond, albeit late, but she says this, I had family in town on Friday, so I ended up closing shop early. I would love to set up a time for Monday morning if possible. I understand life stuff happens, but like this is supposed to be kind of an urgent thing. And like, why do you have to drag us out so much just to set up the dumb phone call? But I'm like, all right. So I'm like, okay, and then I send this message saying I can do 11.30 a.m. Central tomorrow. And I would have done it earlier, but since she's in Pacific time, like, the earliest I can really do is 11.30 Central, which is 9.30 a.m. Pacific. So I send that. No response. Again, no confirmation. I'm like, maybe she got it. And so Monday comes, 11.30 a.m. Central comes by. No phone call, no message, no anything. Finally, like... 45 minutes later, I'm like, are we still planning on calling today, you know? Can you at least, like, respond? And that was at 12.11. Still no response, of course. 
So I'm like, I need to go to the grocery store and clearly like you're not being responsive. I guess this just isn't happening. So I start driving to the grocery store. Of course, when I'm just when I start driving, she decides to call. Me. And you know what the first thing she says is? She's like, oh, sorry, I didn't respond to your message. Uh, it's 1130 now in Texas where you live, right? Because Texas is one hour ahead of Pacific time. Or wait, oh wait, is Texas in Pacific time? And I was like, um, if you know anything about the geography of the United States, you know that Texas, or at least 99% of Texas, is in Central Time, two hours ahead of Pacific Time. So it's neither of those time zones you thought it was in. And even if you didn't know that, let's look at the message that I just sent you before. So I said in my message the previous day, I can do 11.30 a.m. Central tomorrow. 11.30 a.m. Central. 11.30 a.m. What's, what's that word? What's that word? Central. And you missed that somehow, even though I even said it in a previous message too before that message as well. But I was like, all right, it was really awkward since like I was driving and there was noise in the background, but I was like, okay, yeah, it's actually 12.30 here, but um, did you have a follow-up on what we were talking about before? And what she said basically boiled down to um, so we actually have, uh, other candidates that have more experience, and so I'm still gonna send your resume over to the hiring manager, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to call to let you know that. And my reaction is literally just like... Are you kidding me? You literally had to make me try several times to set up a dumb, simple phone call because you weren't responsive. Just for you to call me at the wrong time because you don't understand time zones. Just to have you tell me something that you could have just told me three to four days ago in a one-line message to say, Oh, sorry, we actually have more qualified candidates, so we're not, gonna, we're not hiring anymore. Thank you for your interest, though. Something like that. But no, it's just, I just... It, this kind of thing just pisses me off so much. And I know I'm being really harsh on this one recruiter right now, but it's just after months and months of dealing with this stuff, like the vast majority of recruiters that I've had to deal with, they mess this kind of thing up where they miss a really, really critical important detail or they just suck at communicating so that things just don't move efficiently. And you will definitely see that in the next couple videos that I upload about this. But anyway, I'm starting to go off now and I should probably wrap this up. But let me ask you guys, do you think that I'm kind of just ranting on now about something that's kind of out there? Or do you think there's some truth to what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And next time we'll be going over another crappy recruiter where I actually did get to the interview phase, except a lot of crap happened that really, really pissed me off. So I'll see you next time for that. Bye.